All right, so here we have some outrageous power numbers from Richie Port back 2018. So this is obviously coming into the final stage, which is Wollonga Hill. And um, it was a tough old stage, to be honest. There was a bit of crosswinds. But anyway, as you can see, we've got power on the top, gradient on the left, and cadence and speed on the right. So the climb on Wollonga Hill is about three kilometers at 7%. Um, slightly steeper at the bottom, I believe. Um, I've ridden it a couple uh, times once. It was quite a nice climb. Uh, but yeah, so Richie Port did, you know, in total 450 watts for seven minutes, which is like seven and a bit watts per kilo for him. Super, super, super strong performance from the boy. No doubt about it. But I think the most incredible thing and that what always strikes people with Wollonga Hill is his acceleration. So, you know, like the first couple minutes like this, I mean, 280, like, you know, anyone could keep up now, to be honest, not too hard. Um, but you'll see that it ramps up, it goes to about 400 watts, he does like so six and a half or so watts per kilo for about four minutes, and then when he launches it, it's like 500 for like three minutes, so like eight and a bit watts per kilo for him. It says on Strava his weight is 62, but I don't know, he, I thought he was 58 back in the day when he was going for Grand Tour stuff, but uh, I mean, having said that, he had his best result this year, so I don't know, it could be, it could be more watts per kilo for sure. Um, but anyway, we start to actually get to the climb now. You can see there's big surges here. And this is the thing that's hard is that actually like, you know, you come to the bottom of the climb. Obviously, it's a tough day. But in training, you don't get these surges. Like you can say, oh, I've done two and a half thousand kilojoules. Now I need to, you know, do seven watts per kilo for the climb, which is, yeah, fair enough. You do. But the little accelerations are something that you only really get with rain um, because it's just so hard to to train, I guess. But anyway, so Rowan Dennis um, shows again why he's such a strong team. We've got a little bit of echoes to the old Savio stage this year in the Giro. Uh, and the pace is super, super whole ready. But Yoi comes to the front. And you can see Richie Port is, is a little bit further back. Um, he's not on the camera. But you're, if you look like relatively far back, that's where he is. He doesn't seem to like to be at the front. Diego Lucy lobs a ball on his head um, and is ready to cool down. So he's ready at 10%, 19k an hour. It's pretty... Pretty solid. And this, this UAE guy says, oh, it's ready to go, son. We are absolutely flat line. And you can see the numbers are just super, super high in the wheel. Um, like, you know, close to 400 with speed, spikes of like 500 or so, um, uh, which is, you know, super impressive. In terms of GC-wise on this stage, uh, Pelle Sagan was in the lead, but obviously not really a competitor. And everyone was about the same time, apart from Daryl Impey. Um, obviously, Daryl Impey went on to win the GC this year um, in 2018. But, you know, it doesn't really... Um, matter too much about the GC implications just because you know Richie Port wanted to win the stage. You had like st the yeah, so tons of people he was going against. He had like Sterling Kreuzweig, obviously, Egan Bernal was there on his first thing. We can also look at Bernal's power data, which is quite interesting as well because well, you'll see what happens, but it, it's quite interesting the way Bernal played this. Um, but now it's starting to really get strung out. Um, you can see you know, we've been 350 like me over 400 the whole time, um, and Ryan Dennis now gets on the front now, and he's like, oh, it's, it's ready to go. Um, it's time to absolutely launch it. And, you know, it really does help, especially on this, in order to create a separation, have the pace super high. So if they didn't ride super high, let's say they just rode at, like, threshold, so, like, 350 to, like, maybe 380 for Richie Ball, something like that, then, or 360, like, then, obviously, it would be hard, but, like, at the end, the separation would be that big, because it's not a steep hill, right? So it's, like... You can see here, obviously, some of the gradients are hard, but they're going 22k an hour. You get a very, very good draft at 22k an hour, especially by our peloton. So they have to make it so hard that basically it drops everyone. Like, you've got to be riding, like a pure GC climber has got to basically just ride absolutely full on this in order to ensure that it strings out. And you can see this water bunch, like, it's so, it's very high. And obviously, you know, it's not crazy. Like, some was per kilo and a bit um, for, like, seven minutes is not, like, unheard of. But obviously, it is, like, the beginning of the year, so they're not in top, top condition. Um, but still, nonetheless, um, a very, very impressive time. Um, it wasn't actually the fastest. The fastest was this year, but obviously I had no play time, and also I couldn't use the footage. But uh, the power's coming up a little bit now, and you, you start to see that Richie Poor is, is relatively far back, to be honest. Pedersen's, like, holding on, but um, he's in the Oakwood Leaves jersey, as I said before, but he's obviously going to get spat, so there's no real point concentrating on him. But you can see the speed is still is still very high, and I think, like, obviously the watts are very interesting. Um, um, you know, this, that's why I have, I think it's quite special to be able to do this and show power data like you would for amateurs on it. Um, you can see Bernal's power data is down there, like 380, 400, so, you know, obviously he's a little bit lighter, so it sort of makes sense, but then at the same time, uh, it's just so choppy power data. But I think the speed, like, is more, like, people can understand, because obviously, what's per kilo, like, yeah, 
you know, you have a power meter, you can understand it, but it's just like the speed they got up is 9%, 10%, 20 k an hour. Like that is just really, really quick. Um, and I think, yeah, it's, it's pretty special to like watch it and just see. So you can do down MP is a lot further back. And this is why, like, because it's such a fast climb, um, especially towards the end where the differences are made. If the climb was the other way around, it could be, it could be very, but because at the end it's so flat, it's actually not too hard for a bigger climber, a bigger boy, sorry, to, uh, get across um and actually not lose too much time but if they want you know really hard from the beginning then um if it was like the other way around and let's say it was like a bit steeper at the end then the time gaps would obviously be a lot longer because you can see here that the numbers have caught, fallen down quite a bit um there's obviously sp spikes and stuff but it's not it's definitely not as hard as it was so if we look at richie paul he's now in like seven wheel he's looking around he's ready to go jay mccarthy's on his wheel and this is where burnout makes a big error because he's so forward but here he goes and launches up to about 900 watts, um, or just 890. And Jay McCarthy does a really, really good job. But you can see the speed goes up to 36k an hour on a, like a 5% gradient. It says two, but it's definitely not. And only one person can follow. And this is what I mean. This is a minute um, at like 660, 670. This is crazy. Like the numbers here are the reason why I wanted to do it. Because this acceleration means that, you know, he's so comfortable at riding at that six and a half watt the pace, which probably, you know, is like close to his threshold almost and you can see by now here he managed to get across this gap and if he had been further back and was marking richie paul for sure he would have made it across the numbers he was doing were absolutely bonkers but like you know to get across this like what a two second gap when he's doing 570 is just crazy but it's also like the speed that he's going past everyone he's still well over 30k an hour. and this is when he launched it and the commentators were saying he attacked he didn't actually really attack he just kept the pace the same but because mccarthy obviously slows down then it makes it seem a lot lot um, it seems like he attacked, but then he just settles down into like 480, 500s, and is just flying. And it's unbelievable this, this this climb. I think in that it's so unique in the terms of the fact it's so short, but then at the same time there's always a GC difference. And I think the difference in the level as well. Like Richie Paul always comes to this race absolutely flying, so you can really see it, see the difference. Um, and obviously, like you know, he did lose to Matt Holmes, my boy, who we all love to see. Um, but you know, it's like he he's definitely it definitely shows you the the difference um in ability a lot more because often I think if this was in Europe uh, mid season it wouldn't be that of much of an exciting stage but instead it is because you which know what's going to go and can anyone hold his wheel um and I guess no unless they're in the break which Matt Holmes was we now split back to pets again which is a bit pointless but you can see the numbers are still super super high um and that he he obviously like has to get the separation so he has to absolutely launch it but you can see now he's really struggling. Um, because, you know, it just, it was so anaerobic and now, you know, it was just ridiculous the numbers he was doing. So he's like, I mean, obviously he's still doing crazy hours now, but it's not as crazy as it was. <clears throat> and it starts to fade off, which is the right way to do it because he has to get the gap on this time. If he just, just you know, rode at Awas Piquito for the last three minutes, that'd be good. But, you know, on 8.2, but instead it's better to just get the massive, um, separation. So, Maybe it goes slightly slower overall, but then you're not going to have anyone on your wheel um, because it's, it can be hard to drop people, you know, at 30k an hour, even though, you know, it's a, it can be steep this part on some parts. The fans are going absolutely mental. They love Richie Port. He wins it pretty much every year, as I said. Um, but yeah, there we go. Cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video about Richie Power Data. Um, and cheers to all the comments about how to get fit files. Golden Cheat is the one sorting me out. But anyway, so if you do want me to do any. Uh, more, more race footage let me know but i need to have it like vanderpol someone suggested i can't do i can't get vanderpol's foot like the footage so it has to be probably an old ish race and then have power data but there's darren and peak across the line now um and a super impressive ride from him um so yeah those are the sort of things that we need um anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy and uh we will see you in the next one